How you going, people? Good Texas morning sunrise here. Horses are feeding. I just did that video on that slide stop and I got all these freaking safety Nazis coming out, so I decided to do a crazy cop story. Kind of like really crazy. Let me get out here with my horses so people can crack on my attire. See, see what I'm wearing wrong today, whether it's why are you wearing a drop leg? You tried it. Why are you wearing a scarf? Why you freaking idiots? If you're out here in the cold instead of sitting behind your computer rubbing your tampon, maybe you would know that it's freaking cold to wear a scarf to keep the wind out. It's only 35 out here today. The other day it was 20. And for the idiots who just think the scarf is for looks, it actually keeps you warm. Oh, he wants to be an Afghan. He wants to be a operator. He wa You freaking want to be idiots that ain't got nothing else better to do than run around the internet and try to crack on people? Man, I just wish I could close this damn channel down for the idiots. Unfortunately, I can't. Oh, that's another thing. I must have alcohol in here. Because the way I talk, I'm, I must be drunk for some reason. So... That's what gets me on my story for my crazy cop story. Are my boys out there in the, in the video? You can see them eating their little breakfast there. <laughs> Hi, boys! <laughs> Hi, Mr. T! Hi, old Mr. T! Hi, buddy boy! Alright, said hello to my boys. So, <coughs> and again, I don't like giving my resume every video I do, and there's always this fine line about building credibility with your... When I'm teaching or instructing, you kind of have to give your hero sheet, or you have to write up, you know, kind of, all right, when they introduce you, what's your education, they have all these little questions, and then they do your introduction. And so I don't like doing that on every video. I didn't even like... They'd like my introduction to be like, nah, I was in the military been a cop for 15 20 years on the outside whatever so I, I was usually pretty sharp they'd be like man you got to give us more info what schools have you been and I, I was just never into that so and I didn't hang all my shit on my wall these little I love me walls that you go in people's office and they got every certificate they ever did you go in their office and they got all their medals my medals are in a freaking box somewhere that I got and for the idiots who are saying this guy's never been in the military I've got my DD-214 posted on my website, okay? So, it, it's got my training, it's got my medals, it's got my dates of service. If you've got a 214, all these wannabe military guys saying, oh, I was in the military, I served, I did this. You know, let, let's have some of these guys put up their shit. Let's have Mr., uh, what do they call him, the fat man, put up his shit. Let, let's see, he's put all his training, tell all his training. Let's see his DD-214. Anyway, I digress. Must be the alcohol. <laughs> so, <clears throat> as a cop, you got to realize that not all cops are the same. Not all guys in the military are the same. Okay? There's usually cream rise to the top. You got your three, four, five percent, or your ten percent of the people. You know, ten percent of the people do ninety percent of the work. And that's in a lot of fields. That's not just military and cops. So, when you're when you're working in a, what I call, a meat eater group, a group of guys who are supposed to be kind of, I mean, you know, if you're on a football team, they're aggressive tackling guys. Most of you guys probably can't play football because freaking the helmet law, the damn, you know, pussy posse's been out there stopping every damn thing that could be dangerous. But anyway, so in police work, you still have those divisions. And in every team and every level of the military, just because somebody is a ranger doesn't mean he's a great ranger. There's going to be better rangers and there's going to be the top of the cream rangers that, that people just know are good. And just because you're a SEAL doesn't mean all SEALs are the same. They have the same amount of training. Different people go to different levels. And police work, just because everybody goes to academy, don't mean they're meat eaters and don't mean that they're safety sallies. There's in between and there's the top and there's the bottom. So, and of course, I'm going to tell you I was always at the top because that's just the way I was. And I've got evaluations and certificates and all that other bullshit to back that up, which really doesn't mean jack shit. But 
I, I'm telling you, when I when I worked in a position, I produced more than the guy before me. I, I, that's my kind of philosophy is life is always leave a place better in the military and instill that in me. When you take over a position, when I move from one county to the other, a new base to another base, they used to move people a lot. When you go to a new base, you always want to leave it better than when you found it. You want to improve the building, you want to improve the landscape, you want to improve the training, you want to improve, you want to leave it better than when you got there. And that's how you, that's called standards and making it better. Instead of what we have now is like, oh no, you don't want to make it better because then you might isolate the lazy incompetence and then it would show that they're incompetent. So we need to lower the standard. You can't be making it too high because then the idiots can't reach it. So on this crazy cop story, and I've talked about a couple of these crazy cop stories and I'll probably mention some of these in here. But of course there was some idiot talking about safety Sally. Oh, the way he waves it. Yeah, this gun's freaking loaded. That's right. It's got a bullet in it. I'm pointing it at you. I'm lasering me. Shut up, you freaking idiots. You too scam scared of a gun because it's loaded. The gun ain't going to go off unless you pull the damn trigger. I got so tired of safety sallies out here. Oh, he got safe. People at the range didn't want to. They were always complaining. They didn't want to run. I'd get out there and make them run or fight or do something with their gun. And the, the lazy asses would go to the boss and go, he's running a dangerous range because he's got us with loaded weapons. I ran what's called a hot range. I don't like this. Come to the range empty. I'll tell you when to load. I'll tell you when. I got to keep everybody safe because everybody's a freaking idiot. So I, I just didn't run the range that way. You know what? You're freaking cops. You come out to the range like you carry your gun on duty. You carry your gun loaded. You carry it loaded out here. So I'd have them do drills of fighting or crawling or push-ups or jumping or run from here to there. Get their heart rate up. Try to, you know, turn on the sirens so they couldn't hear. Because that's what happens on this, is sirens are on. So I'd park car, have a siren, have them shooting with the siren blaring in their freaking ear. Of course, they had earplugs for the range, but it was still a distraction. And of course, I always had the safety sallies going back behind my back crying. It's unsafe. He's got a siren blaring, and we can't hear if somebody else sees fire. And it's it's an unsafe range, and, and he's making us fight with a loaded gun. And if our gun falls out, somebody could get hurt. They were always trying to find ways to make the range easy so their lazy, fat ass could come out and go, Okay, I got to qualify. Bang, bang. Okay, thanks. I'll see you later. Mark off the checkbox, and let me go sit behind my desk and drink my coffee. So... I was always dealing with safety sallies in the military, in the police world. In the military, it was such a pain in the ass. We'd do live shoot house. We'd find a, a building they're tearing down. We'd go in there and kick doors, blow shit up. And fucking, I always had these damn crybabies, either safety. And in the military, I don't know if they still have it. They used to have the safety people. And, and they'd always hawk the, the, the dangerous career field. So anytime I was out with our SWAT team training, it would be like safety would show up and they would come out there with their little safety badge and they had to run of the base and they could go anywhere and they could see if we were doing things safe and uh, it was just a pain you know training explosive dogs you had to put out signs you had to block off the area you had to call the weather you had to call the base control tower the fire department had you had this big old checklist for all the safety sallies just to bring out some dynamite or TNT to hide it in a building and let a dog find it it would take training Training that should take 20 minutes would take three hours because of the notifications and the transport and the blocking and the do all. You know, if there was an electric storm that came in the middle, the weather would call safety and go, hey, we got a storm coming in. They're out there doing explosives training. Oh, no, we'll get the safety out there. Have the fire department stand because nobody has a freaking job doing peacetime. So they got to try and make up busy work to justify their jobs. Kind of like a fire department now. They got to run code three in a 40,000 pound vehicle to block traffic because of banana pills on the freaking highway. That's the society we live in. So I digress. <laughs> so there was, I've had a couple of bosses through my days. And look, I get it. I'm kind of a in your face, aggressive kind of, I mean, I, I tell it like it is. And that turns off some people. It doesn't turn off so much other meat eaters because they kind of, I like guys like me because I know where I stand. They can be arrogant, they can be cocky, they can be a pain in the ass, but you know what? If the shit hits the fan, I know I can depend on them, so I can take that other shit. Now, you got your safety sallies and the pussy patrol out there 
who they're never going to get in anything. They're always going to be the last guy to respond. They're always going to take a perimeter position. They're always going to call in good stuff from a distance. Uh, you know, they're going to be late for a briefing if it's a high risk warrant. So they'll get there late so they can get some bullshit, you know, perimeter thing. Because, I mean, just dealing with safety, these safety sallies that are out here in this world now, it's just crazy. I mean, big freaking deal. I move a gun around and I handle it and I change hands and I put it under my arm and oh my God, it's loaded, Rick. No shit, it's loaded. It's a freaking gun, it's a tool. A hammer's loaded. At any point in time, a hammer can bash you in the head. So beware of people with hammers, you freaking idiots. All right, so I had this one sergeant, <laughs> I had a couple. But I had this one, and, and I got shit a lot because I was too, what they called unsafe, or I was too aggressive, or I didn't realize the danger I was putting myself in when I would chase people into buildings, or I would get in pursuits and not back off, or I would chase people over fences for two blocks or three blocks and lose where I'm at because... Freaking Sacramento is 950 square miles. I don't know every alley and every road out there. And when I'm chasing somebody, it starts on a highway. I know where I'm at. But the next thing I knew, this dude's driving, a, jumping a six-foot fence with barbed wire, running through freaking an enclosed area, and we're coming out. You know, so I don't know where the hell we're at now. I might know what direction we're going, but I'm pretty much lost. And if we're jumping through houses and jumping through fences, I'm not getting on street signs. They only put street signs on the corner. Of course, if the safety sally and the pussy patrol ever got out there and did something, they would realize that. But I'd, I'd get called in the sergeant and the sergeant or my lieutenant would be like, hey, Rick, uh, you know, I got a couple complaints that you kind of put, you took unnecessary risk. I go, really? I go, well, I was chasing a fleeing felon who fucking escaped from prison. What? Would you want me to stop chasing him? Well, no, no, I'm not saying that. But, you know, uh, you were by yourself and you could have got... I go, yeah, it's freaking police work. No shit. I said, what? I said, well, who's the pussies that are crying? I said, because I know some pussy came in here and cried. Well, we don't want to get into that, Rick. And you know, I, I just, it was brought to my attention. So, I, and, and, and most of my lieutenants were pretty cool. They, they were okay on it. I had this one lieutenant. It just bugged him. When I went, I mean, look, I am who I am. I mean, if you guys think I'm putting on some freaking act here or I am who I'm fucking am. I mean, and I act the same way pretty much wherever I'm at. And I used to run around the office with a bat. I'd fucking have my gun on. I was fucking ready to go. I was fucking doing warrants. I did a lot of shit that I most... I mean, I had more felony arrests. And I'm not trying to toot my horn. I'm not trying to say I'm freaking great. I'm just saying a lot of cops out there are freaking pansy-ass lazy people that want to sit inside. I mean, I don't remember how many investigators we had. 15, 17, 20-something... But I'm telling you, it changes over the years. But I made more felony arrests than all of them combined. Now, granted, some of them were cold case. Some of them were working freaking cigarette, uh, illegal minor buying shit. So they're not going to get the felony arrest. But I'm telling you, when I, I, I was a freaking jobber. And, and, and it pissed people off because lazy people don't like people that raise the standard or work hard. I used to get all the time, you're making us look bad, man. You're out there getting all these freaking arrests and shit. Now we're getting heat because they're saying we're not doing our job because why can you go out there and get all this shit and we're not? And I'm like, because you're freaking lazy and you're sitting around not fucking doing your job. That's why. I mean, I didn't play that that peer pressure. few guys come to me, hey, man, you know, you got to be. Well, I don't want to hear that bullshit. You guys want to be lazy? I don't give a shit. I'm doing my freaking job. All right, I'm getting paid to be out here. I'm getting paid to take risks. I like freaking taking risk. I like freaking taking somebody on that's going to fight back and that's going to run and try to get away. I don't like writing little old blue-haired ladies tickets in a freaking school zone and running around with a badge and a gun thinking, I'm the toughest guy in the world. I just wrote me 14 tickets today. Ah, you're all a bunch of freaking pussies. So anyway, uh, this one lieutenant, it bugged him. Like I said, I... When I went in and I talked to people, <laughs> I put my feet on their desk. Just if it, it was comfortable or that's just the way I was, man. I just sit back. I always either had my feet on my desk. I had my feet out. I mean, it, I, it wasn't to be disrespectful, but I had this one lieutenant, man. It just freaking drove him nuts. And he wouldn't say anything to me. 
And, and I knew it drove him nuts, and I didn't do it intentionally, but I didn't stop either. Because, I mean, that's just who I was. I'd walk in, he goes, hey, man, I need to talk to you about this, and we talk about Gower case, or, you know, this was, the DA wants this, or here's why we got to go back and do this. Or, so we'd be talking, and I would just, his desk, we had small offices, his desk was kind of right here, and I could either sit like this in front of his desk with my knees almost on his desk, or I could lean back and put my feet up. So I'd, I'd always put my feet up on his desk, not on the desk, but just if the desk is here, I'd kind of put my feet on the edge while I was talking to him. And man, I'm telling you, <laughs> that guy, <laughs> and he was a pretty good guy. I mean, he was one of those on the fence, I don't want any problems. Uh, what, whatever he was told to do, he would do. He was a yes man from the word go. He didn't want to, now, there was a theory that he got shafted because at the sheriff's department, he supported the wrong guy. So when the other guy got elected, they hosed him. And he said from that point on, I'm not supporting anybody. I'm staying neutral. And that's how he was. I mean, um, and that's okay. I mean, I didn't give a shit. He, he, he stayed out of my hair for the most part. And, and he supported me when I was right. And he, he wasn't a, a total pain in the ass. But a couple things he was a little pain in the ass about. But I'd always put my feet on the desk, and I'd have other people come back and say, dude, man, because they'd walk by the office and just shake their head and laugh and keep walking, and then later they'd be like, dude, you know that bugs him when you put your feet on the desk. I go, why? He goes, that's just, you know, he's kind of, he's structured. He's kind of, you know, and he'd kind of, he'd walk around kind of, he, he wasn't a big jokester, didn't laugh. He was, he was very much into the image that I'm a lieutenant and, you know, everybody should be freaking stiff, and I'm just not that way. So it bugged him, and they used to tell me that, and I didn't do anything. But there was an incident where I was doing a warrant. I couldn't find anybody. He was the only guy around. I go, hey, man, I got to go do this warrant. And the freaking PD is too pussy to come out here because it's a, they get federal funds, and they're saying, oh, because they get federal funds, we don't want to get involved because it's the feds, and we're scared. I go, dude, I got a freaking search warrant. I just need some guys to cover their perimeter, a couple guys to make entry. Oh, no, it's federal. We're not. And I might have done the crazy cop story on it. Well, I got this lieutenant that was sitting, this stiff lieutenant, that I kind of didn't have a whole lot of respect for because I thought he was kind of always on the fence. He was a yes man, and you really couldn't depend on him. And you know what? He came out there, the dude started running, I started chasing the dude, and somebody tried to stop him, and he was coming after me, and he stiffed arm like on a football field. <laughs> took a, I can't, it was a female or a male, I can't remember if female or male, but he took her out and freaking had to call an ambulance, and she was like, I can't breathe, and crying, and he was like, and I was like, dude, props to you. I said he took care of business. So although I judged him as kind of being this stiff lieutenant that couldn't, never been out on the streets, when it came down to it, he was there. But you're, you're always going to have the pussy posse and pussy patrol out there in any career field, and it just drives me nuts, these guys that kind of come out here, these posers that want to say, I've been there and done that. And look, just because I've been there and done that, don't make me a freaking expert on everything. But... When you get experience in these different areas and, and I'm passing things on, again, I'm not trying to get anything. I'm not telling you to buy my t-shirt. I'm not telling you to, to make me money. I'm not, I'm not telling you to do any of this shit. I'm doing these freaking videos actually because I really enjoy it and I like passing on shit and telling people the truth instead of comforting lies. So, you know, I, I enjoy it and I really enjoy my, when I, my core people that get me their comments, their questions, they, they challenge me, they ask decent questions to where I have to go, you know what, that's pretty decent, I should cover that, and it gives me somewhere to go. This video was prompted by the idiots that were crying because, oh, he, he pointed his gun at me and it, I was scared, and he's dangerous, and he's got alcohol in his drink, and, and he's got a scarf on, so he thinks he's a, 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 a Afghan, whatever, you freaking idiots. I mean, you pussies would never walk up to me if you saw me in a restaurant and asked me any of those questions. None of you would walk up and go, hey man, why are you wearing that freaking scarf? Act I'd be like, shut the fuck up and get out of my face. What business of it is yours? You need to fucking take a walk. I, I, I just can't believe the balls, the fake balls that people grow on the internet when they would never do that in real life. But I digress. And I, I, I'm not looking for a fight. I, I mean, if I can avoid a fight, I will. I'm not going to go out there and look for a fight. But you come up and start running your fucking mouth to me, you're going to get what you give. It's just like when I tell people with horses. Horses give you what you get. You're always beating and chasing them around. You're going to get it. They're not going to trust you. 
So I'm a firm believer and you get what you give. So take it for what it's worth. I mean, don't the safety, the pussy patrol on the freaking internet, on YouTube, it's in real life. There's always going to be those people that want to tell you what you shouldn't do and how dangerous it is. And, you know, I, we were repelling out of helicopters at this, and the safety comes out there and goes, you know what, that's too, he tried to shut us down. We had to fucking go all overhead and shit just to get permission. I mean, it was hard enough to get a chopper to come over, to get a crew that would come over, to have them waste the gas, to use one of their training missions. They were going to come over, we were going to do some repelling on a building to make an entry. SWAT so train, we probably never done it. I mean, we had to do it, I think, once in Korea to get in an area where a helicopter shot down. But, I mean, it's just there, there's always the, the, the crybabies that are freaking scared to do something. So instead of saying, I'm scared, they will come up with reasons to stop other people from doing it. It's like in a horse world, everybody wants everybody to wear a helmet because you got a bunch of incompetent, fearful idiots who think that I have to wear a helmet but I look like I'm scared if I wear a helmet. So if we make everybody wear helmets, then it doesn't show that I'm scared. And it's the same thing in police work. If we stop the meat eaters, the guys who are out there chasing the bad guys, who enjoy the chase, who freaking get off on the adrenaline pump of taking on guys with guns and bad, real bad guys, not blue hairs at a freaking traffic intersection. I mean, if we can shut them down, then we don't look so much like a pussy because we're sitting around drinking coffee and we can brag about how many tickets we wrote. Uh, I mean, you know, the world is upside down, dude. I mean, men used to be looked at as being men and now it's like, unless you're a freaking pussy, you're dangerous, you're right-wing conspiracy, you're out of control, you're a drunk, you're a wannabe, you're, you're dangerous, you're gonna... I mean, it's like, what happened to being fucking... I mean, that motorcycle video I did, those dude had balls of steel. I love that video. Those guys are freaking, I mean, I wouldn't do that. I would do a lot of shit that they wouldn't do. They'd probably be like, man, I wouldn't kick no freaking door with a dude with a gun and go in there pointing a gun. Fuck that. I wouldn't do that. You know what? I got no problem doing that. But I wouldn't get on that motorcycle at 170 miles an hour and take corners on a wheelie on one tire. I wouldn't do that. I mean, I've done some crazy shit on a motorcycle. My Harley, we'd come back after drinking a few and scrape our, uh, what do they call those little pads for your skids where you put your feet? If you turn, it'll scrape and it leaves a little spark trail. We'd be taking those on corners and leaving our little spark trail. But, I mean, to me, that wasn't as dangerous as 170 miles an hour on a corner. Speed kills. And I'm telling you, <laughs> I mean, I'll drive a car 100, 120, 130, chase somebody. But, man, 170 on a motorcycle, I'm just not going to do that. Especially not at my age. Maybe when I was younger. I mean, again, I am, and I've always lived my life as a risk taker. I just, I'm one of those guys, you know, high testosterone, type A, whatever you want to call it. I like things that challenge me. I like getting better. I like doing things that put a little bit of fear into me, that gets me excited, that lets me know I'm alive. I just enjoy that. I mean, we used to go skiing, and we, <laughs> I remember we were at <laughs> Alpine Meadows, and there's another place. Where did they hold the Olympics? Uh, shit, I can't remember. In California, they held the Olympics. California, Nevada border, where all the mountains are ski mountain. We used to go skiing all types, snow skiing. And we would go, they would shut down on Alpine. Alpine's got some really steep, good double diamonds. And, man, they'd shut these down. <laughs> Me and my buddies, all, and, and the ski patrol would kick you off the mountain if they caught you skiing in the area because they'd shut it off for whatever, for safety reasons. You know, somebody threw a snowball and it rolled and they went, oh, avalanche area, let's shut this area off and make them stay on the plowed area for all the safety sallies out there going, wee, we're going straight. And we'd be like, what the hell? So we were always sneaking into the closed area. We went down this one area one time. I mean, I shit you not, man. We, I don't know how we got out of there alive. It was freaking rocks and ice and we're on the side of this freaking mountain and, and we're kind of jumping side to side just trying to get down this freaking we're looking at each other like shit dude this was stupid they actually they actually closed a mountain that probably should have been closed but we were so used to them closing shit for bs that we just ignored it and went ah shit they're just closing it for some bullshit let's go under the wire and go down this mountain and have some fun dude i don't know how we got off that mountain without killing ourselves because it was scary and it took us at least an hour just to get down this one freaking mountain because I mean 
if we slip and fail, you're screwed. It was rocks and ice. I mean, there was there was hardly any area for our skis to catch an edge. And we were like, shit, man. That We didn't go down that one again. And when they closed that mountain, from that point forward, we didn't go down that sucker. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. <laughs> Look, don't, don't be hating on people just because they enjoy uh, the thrill of the chase or the thrill of life or taking risk. I just hate the society we're in now. That video that I did on those motorcycles, when I first uploaded it, YouTube blocked it. They said not advertiser friendly and they said I couldn't, uh, and again, it, it's not so much about the ads because shit, I only get a few, couple thousand views. I don't make a dollar twenty on a big deal. But it's the exposure and then people don't get it and they don't recommend it. So that's why I don't like that freaking non-ad friendly shit. If they gave the same publicity to non-ad, I wouldn't care. But uh, they, they put that video because, you know, there was a couple of crashes and the guys were being dangerous. And that's just too scary for people on YouTube to be able to see. So we're going to make this non-ad friendly and restrict it. I'm like, really? So I deleted that shit and I re-uploaded it and I changed the wording. And you notice, I, I think the first wording was uh, guys with balls or balls of steel or these guys are... I, I don't remember what it said, but it was much more of a man sport... I mean, it was something a little more aggressive that offended the freaking Nazi patrol of, of YouTube, the, the, the pussy patrol on YouTube, and they were like, oh, oh, we're going to block that. And so I deleted it, and I changed the wording, and then it, now it's, now, of course, until somebody goes and reports it now, and now they'll probably change it, but whatever. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just that, that nobody wants anybody to be able to say things. Free speech is gone, and that's another thing, man, if, if I got anybody here still here. You guys got to be careful in your comments. You're hurting. I mean, I don't really give a shit. You guys say what you want in the comments. But when you start using names like death and kill and, uh, I mean, I've got nigger block because, you know, people are always putting shit just to stir up shit. So, uh, but anyway, when you start using these inflammatory names or aggressive or kill or shoot or I'd cut that sucker's neck off and shit down. When you start saying things like this video, probably be blocked now. When you start saying things like that, YouTube, I'll have videos that are ad friendly and they're promoting them and there's no problem. And then after about 50 comments, it changes to non-ad friendly. Now this is after when I uploaded it, the algorithm automatically grabs it and says it's not ad friendly. And then I have to request a manual review. That's why some of my videos, it takes three days to come out because they don't review it for three days when it's sitting there before I put it public. So it'll sit unlisted and if you wait three days, they'll review it and then they'll tell you. So almost every video I upload is automatically non-ad friendly. I have to challenge it and say it is ad friendly and then three days later, they'll either approve it or not approve it and then I'll put it for public. So, and but there's videos that go through that process and then as soon as I put them public, I get comments of guys talking like guys talk. Yeah, man, she, you know, whatever we want to talk about doing guy talk and it offends one of the tampon police at YouTube and the next thing I know, the video is now non-ad friendly. And I'm like, Jesus. So they're monitoring the comments. They got algorithms stopping speech. They got algorithms checking my damn title. If I change a title, it, it, it becomes ad friendly. If I put the wrong amount of keywords, less keywords is better. I used to put all kind of keywords so it would hit if somebody searched it. Well, now they got all kind of keywords. If you mention gun or deadly force or survival or shit at the fan, all those get blocked on it because they're scanning the keywords. So now I have to put one or two keywords. I have to make my damn title have nothing to do with the video. And then I have to worry about the commenters coming in and saying something that might offend. And all those things are just killing free speech. You can't use YouTube to share information. It isn't freedom anymore. It's absolutely restricted. I know I'm going to have some idiot. It's a private company. Uh, freedom and government. Shut up, you freaking idiots. The spirit of YouTube was about sharing ideas, free education, and letting people have a voice. It was not about a bunch of freaking damn pussy posse sitting in a room saying, this offends me and I don't like this and I don't like that and that offends me and that's too aggressive and that's too bloody and that's too, oh, and he can't hit and no, that cop handcuffed that and we can't show this and we can't, uh, it's just freaking ridiculous. All right, buddy, Mr. T, you're good. Where the hell was Smokey? Mokey was out here a few minutes ago. I don't know if he was running around a video or not. He was in front of me when I started, and uh, I didn't get him. So if y'all guys saw Mokey, I didn't see him. 
All right, we'll end that there. It's not much crazy cop story, but it's kind of, you know, dealing with the pussy posse. Later.